So with that, um, so I think the way I'm gonna edit the final videos, I'll separate it out. I'll um, have my playing with the ChatGPT with a, a problem set seven as one thing, and I'll separate our problem set eight as a, another thing. So let me do the first thing, problem set seven first. Let me go into my uh, test student view and work from there. So in test student view, I will definitely have to use late pass in order to open up problem set seven again. Um, but let me do that. Test student again. My worst student hasn't done basically anything. And um, uh, and I guess as I'm going back this way, I might as well actually check those stuff. Uh, oh, can I? Wait, why can't I? Oh, it's because I've never done the circuit stuff. All right, all right. I, I think I'm good. Um, so I can just close this. Um, close this. Work is done. So test student has a lot of lay passes left because even though he hasn't done any um, homework questions on time, but on the flip side, he also um, never does attempt any of them late even. So um, he, he, you will see how many lay passes he has used. Sorry, I'm going in the wrong direction. <laughs> Just going to modules and go that way. Uh, I, I've been going backward when I should have been going forward so that I'll be reaching week five assignments where there's um, you know, my problem set. And I guess there's um, um, conceptual questions, which um, I have done with the previous version of ChatGPT, and I think I've done it enough. So I'm not going to do it again. I'll just go straight to problem set. And let me just pick a decently, um, decently difficult, <laughs> a problem of a decent level of difficulty and do that. By the way, so I guess if uh, you are running out of late passes, you can do redeem late pass, but also you can also do practice mode. The way this class ends up running, there's really no big difference between an attempt that's done using late pass or attempt that's done using practice mode. So let me actually do practice mode so that I can show you in what sense um, it doesn't really have much difference. So I. Test student doesn't have a lot of lay passes, but let me not waste any of them and just use practice mode um, and do, you know, read it seriously. Although, again, uh, it only mattered up through week two. After that, um, locking a, a problem set like this doesn't actually lock you out of the course. So, but, uh, so let me pick a recent, um, I can't <laughs> form the word right. Let me pick a question of decent level of difficulty and um, work through that with the help of ChatGPT. So I guess it might be towards the end. So let me start from the end. This one, um, I feel like it's, it's on the easier end. You know what? I think in this set, I might not have any questions where you have to use Kirchhoff's rules because um, I would have put all that, that stuff into DC circuit analysis. Let me just make sure that's the case. And I might want to do question 10 if uh, it's the case that there are no questions to be done here that uh, requires use of Kirchhoff's rules. So, yeah, these are all kind of formula application. This, you just take the derivative of that. I think it's fine. Um, yeah, take the derivative. Yeah, so let me do question 10. I think that's uh, a bit more... Um, um, I mean, um, it's not that hard, but I, I think uh, um, it's more interesting to me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so let me do this. Apparently, there's another question here, um, but let me just do this one. Um, yeah, and even in test uh, practice mode, you shouldn't have access to the answer case, which is as it's intended. So, uh, let me do my usual thing. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to teach me how to do these questions and not give me answers right away. So, uh, so let me start with that. Hi, I'm working on my electromagnetism homework set again. This time uh, I'm working on the simple circuit questions. Um, and as uh, I said before, I really need to prepare for the oral exam I need to complete after finishing this module. So please um, explain um, solutions step by step 
and better yet um, wait for me to tell you what I've done so far and just to help me with the next step. Thank you. I need to acknowledge. Uh, let me see what this note says. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there are too many V's. Italicized the V, like this V is the variable, and this V is the voltage. <laughs> Sorry, um, it's a very confusing way to write it, but I guess I could have used the different letter for B, like a, um, itali not italicized. A script E is something that people use to stand for EMF, but that's actually the reason I stay away from it, because I'm not going to use the phrase EMF. Other than to tell you that I'm not going to use phrase EMF. So, um, so let me do it this way. Um, so I think I can paste in uh, parts A and B. And I think uh, um, equivalent to resistance, that feels so easy that I'll just have to say that I get it. Um, so, so, so let me do it this way. Uh, uh, so this is the question including parts A and B. And I think uh, I can do A uh, for the registers in series, uh, which these appear to be. Uh, I just uh, add, the, add the resistances together for the um, for the equivalent terms, right? You'll probably acknowledge I want to test uh, what it does with the part to be if it kind of waits for me to attempt the part B. So it should be nine. Um, oh, yeah. So let me enter nine and I'll tell it, uh, yeah, I got nine. I got nine. And then for part to be, um, I was planning on telling it, um, like, you know, I did something like 18 volt divided by each of the resistance separately and didn't get the right answer. But let me first see what the chat GPT tells me. Maybe it'll give me some help first. Calculate the total current. Uh, yeah, so I mean that's correct, but let's imagine that I step on each register. Yeah, that's what kind of definition of being in series is. Um, so you know, I mean here you know you do have to be basically acting in bad faith to get this wrong. Like oh, it's all there. Like the only step it left for you is to do eighteen divided by nine, get two two ampere. That's the answer. But let's say. Um, uh, I so I just didn't read any of this, and I say I took the voltage and divided by each register, um, but it says it's wrong. So let me do this. I'm gonna take the 18 volts and divide by each one one at a time. So divide by four, that's gonna be 4.5 ampere. Divide by one, that's gonna be 18 ampere. And divide by 4, that's going to be another 4.5 ampere. And I'll submit. It'll say it's wrong. <laughs> and then I'll include it. I wonder if it'll correctly guess what I did. Because um, I think I deliberately phrased this a little bit um, um, ambiguously, maybe. We'll see. And I, and I don't think this mistake is realistic. Most people will have gotten, you know, 2 to 2. two. That's it, right? You are dividing total voltage across each register. Remember that I can say which is sync. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. With that these currents shouldn't be different. Uh, total current calculated by yeah, uh, equally through R one, R two, R three. Um, solve it together. Yeah, so to yeah, it's kind of spoon feeding me a little bit more, and you know. He, at this point, you probably should have said too. <laughs> I don't have any excuse for being wrong anymore. So find the potential drop across each register. Let's say um, I'm still not getting it. 
18, 18, 18. I'm just guessing, maybe. Um, or, um, or just to make it slightly more plausible, I can do 6, 6, 6, like dividing the voltage into three parts. Um, so, taking this, I'll say, great, I got, great, uh, I got 2 ampere, and that looks right, but the system says my attempt at part C, part, is wrong. Uh, what did I do wrong? Yeah, correct number of potential drop. Yeah, this is the expression you have to use. You know the current, you know the voltage of each one, and then, uh, wow, is it just working it out for me? Um, it's not um, entering. Um, um, yeah, and uh, let me not try to be deliberate with this. Um, or, uh, let me just ask this anyway. Um, sorry, uh, uh, why do you have 8 volt for the voltage drop? Isn't the battery at 18 volts? You know, imagine I'm sleep deprived and I'm barely thinking my way through and <laughs> doing that. Uh, why we have those 8 volt values, uh, voltage resistant current flowing through it, not just the, yeah. Uh, distributed across yeah so when you add those voltages you'll get 18 all added together we use ohm's law yeah i mean yeah that's the procedure um, if you need the explanation for that then uh, i guess i would explain it back through um, the ideas we introduced in electrostatics uh yeah Do that and yeah adding them together you get 18 volts yeah that's right so let me just put this in so with the part D, uh, find the power dissipated by its register. Give your answer as a comma separate value. Okay, so let me flip them. So I think with all the help I've been getting involving the equivalent resistance, I feel like I can get the total power. Uh, so I'll say, uh, thank you, uh, I got, uh, or, and I got part E, uh, by using the formula power is equal to V times I um, V times I? No, let me use uh, I squared R uh, It's super inefficient for part E, but let me do it anyway uh, And I use the current we found to ampere and the equivalent resistance um, R is equal to um, 9 ohm. Um, but I'm not sure oh, what to do for D. Uh, this is a slightly, um, so let me actually do this calculation. So 4 times 9, 36 watt. Hopefully that's correct. Yes. Um, so um, technically, when whenever you are trying to find the energy di dissipated in an individual register, this actually is the formula you would use. So I do think it's a bit implausible that someone would be deliberately using this formula and then say, oh, I don't know what to do for part D, but let's just give that a try and see what ChatGPT says. In the part D where individually, yeah, you just use the formula. <laughs> um, this is actually the easier one to use because if you are using like a voltage squared divided by R, then um, you have to keep things straight. You have to make sure to use the voltage across the register only. Uh, so you have to be using the correct value of the voltage here. Whereas with the current in series circuit, it's all the same current. So, you know, you don't have to be as careful. So, oh, gave me answers. Yeah, and when you add them up, you get 36. So ChatGPT might have been anticipated from my previous question um, to combine this. 
So right, let me just put those in. And this, as I said at the beginning, it's it's an easy question. The harder DC circuit analysis questions that's been put into its own module that you will complete between now and the um, and and when we uh, the week we are about to start a time dependent circuit. So um, so yeah, this is all good. So let me just say uh, thank you. And. Uh, um, and uh, let me demonstrate what I was uh, saying at the beginning of uh, this, um, saying that practice attempt practically has no difference from the, uh, the regular attempt that you do, do using lay pass. Now, in terms of grade, um, this definitely isn't what you want to do. So let me go into test to so grade book. When you look at problems at seven, you will see a grade of zero because doing the... Um, because doing the question in uh, the, uh, sorry, <laughs> I am actually sleep deprived. <laughs> doing the questions in practice mode, it didn't give me any credit. So if I look at problems at seven here, I should have, well, it says none. Um, but, you know, that is, later on, I'm going to be putting in grades of zero for all the missing scores. So that's uh, where you are uh, in the Canvas grade book. But this is the sense in which um, the attempt in the practice mode matters. So when we do our one-on-one -on -one meeting, the place I start with is um, where your submissions are. Let me navigate to the test student submission and show you that we can actually work with the, the practice attempt. So I'm going through the gradebook and the test student gradebook here. Test student has a pretty terrible gradebook. Never did any of these. Um, this did very minimally. Um, so their circuit intro, no submission. So when when I look at it, uh, so I get the normal attempt. So scored attempt is basically not started. Now, usually there's ah there it is. There's practice attempt. So practice attempt to get uh, recorded similarly as the scored attempt. So when we do the required one-on-one -on -one meeting, and I'm trying to uh, look at, you know, do you understand the physics problem solving technique? And I really prefer to ask you questions that you have seen. And if there's a scored attempt where you have plenty of questions you have seen and done, then great, we work with that. But somehow, if not, maybe you don't have a scored attempt because you ran out of late passes. Then as long as you have practice attempt, we can look at your practice attempt. I can see what you have done here. I can uh, ask you to work it out again. So, so that's the sense in which a practice mode is basically no different from the regular attempt as far as the ultimate grade is concerned. I, I do think it's better if you are keeping up with the assignment on time regularly and uh, not have to use practice mode. But you know, if you have to, then please do. There's no huge downside to doing practice mode.